Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking all things digestion. If you guys are new around here, welcome. My name is Becca, I'm a registered dietitian. I'm very passionate about nutrition, very passionate about intuitive eating, and also very passionate about explaining how our bodies work um, in conjunction with how we eat. Because if you can have a base layer knowledge of your biology and how food is going to interact with it and other factors, um, it's going to make a huge impact on how you feel. And I feel like the more that you know and the more that you understand, the better that you can feel. So there are many different factors that can affect your digestion and how well it's working for you. And this video is not going to be exhaustive of every possible thing, but I am going to touch on the five most basic areas um, or fa like factors that you can focus on to improve or optimize your digestion. And I am very much, um, I like to look at the whole body. I like to take a really holistic approach, approach to health. It's not just cut and dry, eat this, do that. Everyone's body is different. And so there's always kind of this intuitive layer piece that's super important to kind of tap into if you really want to be your healthiest self physically, mentally, like, whole body. So your digestive system and your gut and all the bacteria and everything that's going on down there, it is pretty complex, but there are definitely five main areas um, that you can focus on to optimize your digestion. And having like a healthy digestive system that is working properly is so important, not just for your health, but also how you feel. I have definitely struggled with digestive issues big time in the past, especially before I learned how to actually like listen to my body and eat intuitively and eat in a way that it was like wanting. Um, before that, I had so many digestive issues. And when I counseled clients in, you know, one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling, this was often something that came up. There was always digestive issues that we were trying to kind of tease out what the problems were. Of course, there are you know diagnoses that can affect your digestive system, but just for the everyday person that's maybe struggling in one of these five areas, you can certainly focus on them and improve them and then therefore improve your digestion and just feel better. So the first thing is having a healthy microbiome. So the microbiome is a fancy term for all the bacteria in your gut. You are the host, but you actually have more bacterial cells in your body than you do human cells. So we are made up of so many different types of bacteria and our guts are a really, really concentrated area, um, basically like a colony of this bacteria. And we want a thriving, diverse bacteria um, colony that has many different strains with many different you know, functions within general bacterial functions in our guts. And we really want it to be thriving. We want to have way more of the good bacteria so that they can kind of balance out any bad bacteria. And that is what is going to help us digest our food. This is a huge portion of our immune system and its function. These bacteria can actually produce vitamins that we need in our body, for example, vitamin K or biotin. They also are going to protect against harmful bacteria. Our gut, the lining of our intestine, is kind of like the keeper. It's like the door that any kind of pathogen could potentially try and get through because if we're eating food, we're kind of bringing in all of this stuff. And our gut is what kind of teases out or makes sure the bad stuff doesn't get through into our actual like bloodstream. So this is a super important part. The actual bacteria that's down there is one of the keys to filtering out the harmful stuff and making sure that it doesn't actually pass over into our bodies. So not only is this important for whole body health, having a healthy, plentiful, diverse, just thriving microbiome, but it's also, like I said, those bacteria play into um, and have a role in how we digest our food. So that is super important for just strictly our digestion as well and therefore will impact how we feel. So ways that you can improve your microbiome, really there's two main direct ways. So that is either with probiotic supplementation or the consumption of fermented foods. So probiotic supplement, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a very, very popular supplement. There's so many different ones out there on the market. Um, but supplementing with a probiotic is basically taking a capsule full of these beneficial bacteria strains. So you're just 
consuming it. Um, most of them hopefully will get down past your stomach acid and actually get into your intestine where they belong um, and where they can work their magic. Um, so that is one way that you can do it. You can actually just supplement, take a capsule full of this bacteria to help diversify and fortify the um, gut down in your bacteria or the bacteria down in your gut. Second, you can consume fermented foods. So fermented foods basically are foods that contain these probiotic um, or beneficial bacteria strains naturally. So if you take something like cabbage, for example, it's going to naturally, just from being in the soil, growing in the earth, it's going to have some of these beneficial bacteria strains in the cabbage. Now, if you ferment it, so turn it into sauerkraut, which is basically adding salt, sticking it in a jar, and letting it sit for an entire week so that all those, or a week or so, so that bacteria can proliferate, then you're going to have this end product, which is sauerkraut, but it's fermented cabbage, and it is rich with these bacteria strains because you create an environment for that bacteria to grow. And remember, this is good bacteria. We want it to grow. And then if you're consuming that, same thing. It's getting down into your gut. It's making its way down there, and it's going to help diversify, fortify, and just make that gut, gut even healthier. What's interesting is our ancestors fermented foods were a staple in their diet. Now, of course, they fermented foods so that they could preserve them for so that they could eat them later on, many, many years ago before refrigeration was a thing. But also, you know, I do think that there was this sense of, you know, fermented foods are a key and it should be a staple in the diet because they didn't have probiotic supplements back then. But they did have fermented foods in their daily diet to keep that microbiome really strong and really healthy. Now I mentioned sauerkraut, but also um, drinking kombucha or eating kimchi or eating yogurt or kefir. These are all fermented foods and you can Google, there's even more than that, but those are just some of the most basic ones off the top of my head. But those are all, if you can get those into your diet on a daily or even weekly basis, this is going to be a great way to naturally supplement your microbiome. And one more thing I wanted to mention, um, there is a one other way that you can directly impact um, your microbiome and how it's how healthy it is and help that bacteria proliferate and that is through consuming prebiotics which is basically food for your bacteria prebiotics um, they contain oligosaccharides which are these like carbohydrate um, chains molecules type thing that your gut bacteria love to feast on so obviously if we are continually feeding them with the food that they especially like that is rich in those oligosaccharides that is also going to help your gut just to be a thriving colony of bacteria so things like garlic and onions leeks um, bananas asparagus again you can google for a more exhaustive list but those are just some of the most basic ones if you're consuming these foods um, again in your diet on a regular basis this is just another way to help really fortify and bolster and strengthen that microbiome the second one is probably one that you've heard of and that is consuming fiber in your diet so fiber plays a really key role in your digestive system because fiber actually never gets absorbed into your body. It's just going to pass right on through. And depending on what the fiber is, there are two different types that I will explain. They have played different roles in actually like the moving of the digestive um, contents through your intestines and actually help with like the creation of stools and all of that. And it does have a really, really important role. So there are two different types of fiber. There's soluble fiber and then also insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber, what it does, its main roles in your digestive system, um, it creates kind of like a gel-like substance or like matrix in your intestine mixed up with all of that food that has been digested down. So what this is going to do is A, it's actually going to slow down digestion just a bit, which is a good thing, um, ideally, because we are able to, or our bodies are actually able to have more time to extract nutrients from that food. So that is one good thing. And then another good thing, um, you know, this gel-like substance does, it actually increases our satiety, meaning we feel fuller longer. So this is one of the ways that fiber can actually make you feel really full. Insoluble fiber kind of acts in a different way. This is more like it helps to create like the passage of those digestive contents that will later just be excreted as stool. Um, so it helps pull water, H2O water, into your intestines, which is going to help 
kind of move things along. It will also increase the weight um, and the bulk of your stools, which is just a lovely thing to think about. Um, and it will just improve your regularity. So having both types of fiber in your diet is most ideal situation. So soluble fiber sources, think oatmeal, berries, flax seeds, beans, lentils, apples, um, broccoli, pears, sweet potatoes. These are all really good sources. Again, you can look up a more exhaustive list online, but those are all excellent sources of soluble fiber, especially. And then some sources of insoluble fiber are, you know, like your wheat bran, um, your wheat breads, um, brown rice, avocados, greens, like, you know, your leafy greens, kale, spinach, that kind of thing. Green beans are another one. So having both of these types of fiber in your diet, like I said, is ideal, but this is not something you necessarily need to stress over if you eat a lot of real whole food. If you're eating a lot of that, you know, fruits and vegetables and grains and just real whole foods, you're gonna be getting plenty of fiber and you're definitely gonna be getting a mix of both of these. So it's not something you really need to stress about. The third area to consider is your hydration. Now this is a pretty obvious one, um, but I did wanna skip over it because it is super important. We all know that we need to be drinking water um, for so many different reasons for health, but digestion is definitely one of them. So if you are inadequately hydrated or you're dehydrated, um, as far as what's happening in your digestive system is it can really slow things down. So increase the transit time, which, you know, if you're dealing with constipation, that is certainly not something that you want. Um, and if this is something that is happening to you often, water, you know, not drinking enough water could possibly be the reason. And dehydration obviously is also just going to decrease your regularity. So if things are really slowing down because there's just not enough water, remember that fiber, one of its um, roles is pulling water into your intestines. Water is super important for, actually getting water into your intestines is super important for the transit um, of the digestive contents through your GI tract. This is, a, this is why coffee can really make you poop because it's osmotic. Caffeine is osmotic, meaning it pulls water to wherever it is. So when you drink that cup of coffee in the morning, whoop, you're pulling lots of water real quick into your intestines, which can just get things moving. So that's a way that you can kind of visualize what I'm talking about here when with water being super key to the like passage of digestive contents. We need to be hydrated in order for things to be moving smoothly and for you to be regular. So what I want you to do is drink at least half of your body weight in ounces a day. I honestly drink way more than that. Um, it's up to you how much water you drink, of course, but that I would say is a minimum. Um, most people should probably be drinking more and you might even easily drink more than that without even trying. But if you're not very good about drinking water, it's definitely an area that you should work on because it's important for so many different areas of your body, not just your digestive system. You can make it more exciting by drinking sparkling water um, or you know, adding like lemon or other fruit or anything to spice it up. You can use drops. Um, there's lots of different ones that you can buy to flavor your water. Um, some of the ingredients are like not the best. This is something you're gonna be drinking every day. So just, you know, be conscious of that. But there's lots of ways that you can dress up water and just make it a little bit more exciting so that you can get that intake in every day. And another thing I notice um, for myself is if I start off the day hydrated, meaning I drink a good amount of water first thing in the morning before I have any coffee, um, I am so much more apt to continue to drink water throughout the day. On the days that I am lazy and I don't do that, it's like this weird reverse thing where I'm actually like, I don't want to drink much water, even though I'm dehydrated. Um, but when I do hydrate first thing in the morning, I want to drink water all day long. Okay, the fourth thing is managing your stress level. So this may not seem like a super obvious one, but there is actually a very strong connection between your brain and your gut. It's actually called the gut-brain axis. So this axis is technically just a link between your central nervous system and your enteric nervous system. So you, we all know that we have you know, our central nervous system, tons of nerves all throughout our body. It controls pretty much everything, but we also have so much of that in our intestines as well. So many nerves, it is this whole own system, this whole own network called your enteric nervous system. And these nervous systems, they speak to each other and it's actually a bio-directional um, 
relationship, meaning your, your brain can directly affect what's happening in your gut, how well it's functioning, and the other way around too. So if your gut is not functioning very well, it can impact your brain. This is why you see in research some um, correlations of like a like poor gut health, um, like a unhappy, unhealthy microbiome, and things like depression. When it comes to looking at stress in our digestive system, we're obviously looking at how our central nervous system is impacting that enteric nervous system. So for example, if you have, if you are very stressed out, you're going to have very high levels of cortisol. Cortisol is that fight or flight hormone, meaning it's going to get us ready for battle. So Literally what happens when you have a like a shot of cortisone or just high levels of cortisone coursing through your veins your body takes like the situation it thinks that you're preparing for um, No matter what the stressor is the stressor could literally be just trying to get your kids to school in time in the morning Or the stress could be that you have a deadline at work. Those are not life-threatening things, right? But our body perceives it as if it's life-threatening as if we are literally about to like fight off a bear or sprint from a lion something like that. It goes back to, you know, just our um, primal days. That is literally what your body thinks is going on. So what happens when you have high cortisol levels, so again, this is more of like a nervous system situation. We perceive stress, we increase the cortisol because your body is trying to prepare your prepare itself for fighting or, or, or for sprinting. So what actually happens is you shunt a lot more of your blood flow into your limbs and these muscles, right? So that you can fight or you can flight um, and it pulls the blood away from the muscles in your digestive tract. So it's essentially kind of somewhat shutting down your digestive system so that it can, you know, um, focus on being able to sprint or fight or whatever it needs to do. But you know, the problem is if you are always stressed about all of these actually non-life-threatening things like our just day-to-day -day daily stresses um, that come with living in this modern world, you are always shunting blood away from your digestive system. You are chronically kind of putting your digestive system on the back burner, if that makes sense. So it is super important that we manage and address our stress levels if they are out of control um, if they are too much um, and honestly I almost want to say like who isn't super stressed these days you know this is kind of a tough one I think for anyone including me um, but anything that you can do to manage your stress level so just actually stopping to take a few deep belly breaths throughout the day can make like literally just for 30 seconds or a minute can make a huge difference in how your nervous system is perceiving what's going on and therefore what it's telling your enteric nervous system, your gut to do. Um, getting better sleep, you know, exercising, all the things we know that will manage stress. Again, you can look up a more exhaustive list, but I think most of us know things that we can be doing to keep our stress levels in check. And that is something you definitely want to be, you definitely want to do for so many different health reasons, but especially digestion, especially if you are struggling in this area. The fifth area to focus on is exercise, physical activity. So we now know that, you know, exercising can impact our stress levels, which will impact how well our gut is working, um, how, you know, well equipped it is with blood flow and all the other things it needs to function. But exercise can actually have an even more direct impact on your digestive tract. So we know that when we exercise, um, we really get our blood pumping and it is just flowing even faster um, and more like efficiently throughout our body. So it's sending blood to all of our muscles, nice oxygen rich blood, and that includes our intestinal muscles. So the lining of your intestine is actually very muscular and how we actually move the digestive contents and all of that somewhat digested food through your intestines um, with the help of water is something called peristalsis where your muscles literally will like contract like this and it kind of um, just moves the food through. So muscles are very key to your digestive system and if you are exercising regularly and you're getting that blood pumping and all of that oxygen rich blood flowing, this is going to benefit those muscles as, as well. So it can actually increase, or I'm sorry, decrease transit time, meaning it's speeding up um, how quickly those contents are moving through your digestive system. So if you're someone who struggles with irregu irregularity, meaning you're not regular, 
um, maybe constipation is something that you struggle with, exercise can be one of the ways that you can kind of get things moving. And also, there's some interesting research out there that shows that exercise can do so much more than just, you know, increase that kind of peristalsis and regularity. Um, it actually can have impacts on our gut health and our gut lining. So, um, in studies have shown that moderate exercise, not so much super intense exercise, sometimes that can actually have a negative impact, but moderate exercise, which is what most people, unless you're like an elite athlete, um, are probably doing, um, that can actually decrease gut permeability, meaning decrease the chance of, thing, of things slipping through your gut lining that aren't supposed to. And remember I said at the very beginning of the video that our guts are kind of like the they're like the bodyguard <laughs> to get uh, stuff trying to get into our body and we don't want pathogens or other foreign materials getting through that aren't supposed to. So having a really strong gut lining that is not permeable is important because you only want the things to pass through that are designed to pass through. So moderate exercise can actually improve that, improve your gut line, improve your gut lining and decrease permeability. There is also research that shows that exercise can impact your gut flora, your gut microbiome, all of those bacteria. So they um, have found that there can be an increase in like the um, species or diversity of the gut or microbiome. Um, so there's just more diverse um, bacteria, more strains down there, which is always good. That's what we want. And also research has shown that there's actually an increase in the immune regulating bacteria, which makes sense if we are, you know, really boosting the microbiome and it's more diverse and it's more thriving. A lot of our microbiome is immune regulating bacteria. It has direct impacts on our immune system, which again makes sense. Think of your gut as kind of like the bodyguard. We don't want things getting through that aren't supposed to. So of course with, you know, food that we're consuming and everything else, we are making sure that, um, we want to make sure that our guts are super strong, our microbiome is strong, our gut lining is strong. Um, so it makes sense that, you know, so much of your immune system is there because it is constantly getting assaulted with foreign things from our environment getting into our guts. So there you have it. Those are five key areas you can focus on to optimize your digestion. So your microbiome, making sure you're consuming fiber through your diet and whole foods, um, consuming enough or drinking enough water, managing your stress levels, and also exercising. So those are five key areas. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoy these types of nutrition and biology lessons. This is truly one of my biggest passions. I love teaching this stuff because it is relatable and useful for everyone because we all have bodies and we all need to eat and we all need to think about food. So I would rather you be less stressed about food and your health and digestion and all of those things um, because you are just better equipped with knowledge. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want more um, of this type of help, I actually have an entire course on nutrition and intuitive eating where we dive into many different topics just like this. And you can actually, it's a group coaching program. So you will actually be able to talk with me over Zoom to kind of work through any problems that you have um, and learn how to be your healthiest self both with having new nutrition knowledge, but also learning how to eat intuitively and listen to your body and respond to it um, as well. So I always have a link down in the description box for that. It's gonna be opening up for enrollment again soon. So just keep an eye out for it. Um, you can join the waitlist if you'd like more information. But that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching.